yeah, I, <laughs> as soon as you said the, the daunting feeling of giving your first project, yeah, it is very daunting. But knowing that I've just sat across from me, I can always ask questions, I can always learn something new. If I'm not sure, I'm not afraid to ask. And I think that's a really good attitude to have going forward in any company. Hello and welcome to another MTD podcast. I'm here with the guys from Heimbook. So can you introduce yourself? I'm Dave Noakes and I'm from Heimbook. Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm from Heimbook also. And what are your job titles at Heimbook? Well, we don't really have one. You know, it uh, encompasses everything. Sales, engineering, hoovering the carpet, So you are literally just, a, you're just an all-rounder. Well, I think, you know, Heimbook, although it's a big company in Germany, we're quite small in England. You know, there's only six of us. And, you know, it's one thing I love about working for a small company. You do a lot of different things. It doesn't really get boring, does it? No, no. So how long have you been at Heimbook? Ooh, 13 years now. Going well then? Yeah, I'm getting the hang of it slowly. <laughs> so who have you brought with you today? I've brought uh, Jacob Machin, who's our apprentice, who's just about to finish his apprenticeship, in yeah, fact. Yeah, indeed. Hoping to go into the more technical side. We'll still be involved in sales, but well, because, as Dave said, we're small. Everyone's involved in the sales aspect of things, but not everyone's involved in the technical and the engineering side in terms of helping people with certain applications, special projects and such. So what's it like? Um, did you do something in engineering before Heimbrook? Well... I'm, I, I only did a college course and then I went straight into my apprenticeship with Heimbook. Um, well, in terms of how the apprenticeship is, it's, it's quite good. Only thing is, because uh, I've said we're small, we can't have any dead weight. So being an apprentice, you pretty much just do the full job. <laughs> sort of a baptism of fire, if you know what I mean. Well, talking yeah. about that, we spoke before this and you've actually got a bit of a thing apprentices have to do when they first start with you guys, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, so when you first start, when you're a young, a youngling that's all nervous, you, they just put you straight on the phone, answering all inquiries, dropping you right in the deep end. It's a good way to build confidence because you don't have any choice but to build confidence. No, and sometimes I think it's a bit easier to talk on the phone than to talk to somebody in person. Oh, of course. But yeah. the phone is a good place to start. Mm. And of course, you know, to be fair, you know, these young lads come from school and... <laughs> you you know, can say it, I know where you're going to go with know, it. Their communication skills are perhaps not the best, but you'd be surprised how quickly they start getting the hang of it. Is this coming from the uh, texting generation? Yeah, I think you're probably <laughs> right, yes. You yeah. know, a bit different from our generation when we didn't have mobile phones. But, you know, that's not to say it's a bad thing. But, you know, I in our industry, as you know, communication is key. Oh, definitely. And let's be honest, we talk to hundreds of thousands of people a year and you've got to be able to talk to everybody. It doesn't matter what industry, mm. what company. What so position the, the, the person's in. And actually, that's quite a big one because sometimes you can go and you'll be talking to the machinist. Ten minutes later, you're talking to the CEO of, of, of these companies. Yeah, so yeah you've got to be versatile. Yeah, And not shy. Exactly, oh, yeah. not shy. Don't be shy. You don't have a choice. <laughs> well, I think There's people would have something to say about me if somebody tried to call me shy. Yeah. yeah. So how was your journey uh, to the MTD office today? Well, we came together, same car. We got quite a bit of kit in. As you know, we bought our Centratech system, which is a, a, a quick change, multifaceted system. And, you know, certainly the way forward for the way the industry's going with automation and small batches, quick changeover, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's not the lightest thing, is it? I picked the wrong box to pull to bring upstairs this morning. <laughs> I think we had about five boxes, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this new automation system, what is it? Well, Jacob, well, what do you want? So basically, rather than having the bog standard system that was invented probably in the 50s of mounting your truck to the machine manually, bolting everything up, clocking everything in, it's a new take on that where you basically make a common interface f that you mount into the machine, clock that in, and you never touch it. And then you just put a common interface on the back end of your work holding devices, and you can just mount them all uh, onto that common interface. And the only thing you have to do is it's a bayonet adapter, uh, close the bayonet, tighten one screw, and then you're done. 
I think what's great about this, though, is it's not actually a Heim book specific, though, is it? You can use other companies' products with this new system. Yeah, yeah. you can. I mean, it, it, it is a Heim book product, but have, you know, certain customers will have particular work holding that they're, they're, they're very keen on keeping. So while you may have a Heim book mandrel, a Heim book three jaw chuck, a Heim book collet chuck, if you've got you know, a product from another manufacturer that you like to use that can be mounted on the back of a Heimbuck interface plate and that can be used in the system. Well, let's be honest, most companies now all have a chuck that's in a cupboard somewhere that gets used yep. once a year, but yeah. it's needed. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yep. And it just allows you to use that chuck a lot easier. It makes a four-man job. Say, say you've got a 500 mil chuck like we were talking about earlier. If you got that, and you obviously you don't want to buy another 500 mil chuck just so you can use it with our system. We just adapt our system to suit your own. But I think what's great about this system as well is the ease of it. But I think we really need to go in on the speed of changeover. Yeah, yeah. It well, with it, this is something we've been talking about all morning. And, you know, to take a three-jaw chuck off, put a collet chuck or a mandrel on a machine, you know, and this is not withstanding the health and safety aspect of it, the weight of it and, you know, that kind of stuff. It can take you, you know, a couple of hours. But it can also take you bodies as well because yeah, yeah some chucks are that heavy. You, you've got one guy lifting it onto the lathe and then you've got another guy tightening it. So this actually brings that down to just a one-man job as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then also this comes in two sizes. So... You've actually done a bit of forward thinking on getting the bigger stuff on the machine as well to keep this a one-man job. Well, the Centra Texas tends to be, you know, you can manually change that. Most people can, you know. But the M, which is for heavier work holding, you need a crane to, to load that in. Yeah, and we, well, we thought about that in the production of the Montec crane uh, system. You just hook it onto your existing crane system. And then it basically allows you to, it's got a little butterfly spring in the top, so it allows you to just put that on that much easier. Um, it, as you said, it takes a four-man job to a one-man job. And I really like asking this question because I always like the answer, but <laughs> what's this like to your competitors, which are around the same? Well, no one else does it. We're the only people that do it. We know the secret, and we're using it very well. It's a unique system, as, as is most of what Heimbook make. But you see, the thing is, with unique systems, they're often copied. Well, yeah, we've seen this many times before, even as simple as a Hoover. Well, you know, it's a great one to come on because, you know, we often get customers who have bought the copies but call them Heimbooks. It's that same analogy, isn't it? And they, you know, they ring us up and, oh, this Heimbook, and then... When we actually sort of do a little bit more delving, it's not one of our products at all. It's one of the copies. But I think that's I think that's great for you guys that just by somebody ringing up and talking you through a little bit of their problems, you already know it's not your product uh, because you products. don't have that problem. Mm. We know our mm. products very well, very very well. And I think that's great. And like, even if they send you a picture, that's definitely not ours. So yeah. sorry, you've you've bought what you think is a handbook, but it's not. It's just a a, a copy. Yeah. Yeah. So, talking of Heimbrook, what are some of the other things Heimbrook do as a company? Well, well we do. <laughs> we've, we're very, very well known for our rotating stuff. You know, we're almost, if you like, a go-to for all the machine tool companies now for our rotating work holding. So, who are some of your biggest machine tool companies? Can we go down that road? Well, you know, I don't really want to mention names, but... but Let's say most of them use the Heimbook now, you know, because they know it works, it does what it says on the tin, and the customers demand it now. You know, it, it, it's become the go-to standard, certainly in the UK, and I know it is in Europe as well. Um, but one thing we're not known so well for is our stationary stuff, and we do quite a bit of stationary stuff that incorporates the clamping elements that we use in our rotating so, in effect, if you've got a machinist centre, you can buy something like one of our Manox, which is a stationary device that will fit on a machinist centre table, and you can use the collets, or clamping heads, should I say, that you've got on your rotating in a Manox, 
cheap fixturing. Yeah, so you can keep costs down because you can. I don't think I've really seen this system before, where you can you can share work holding between your rotating lathes. and yeah. stationary. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, not only with the Manox, but we also have uh, Hydrox, which are hydraulically hydraulically actuated chucks, and use them as you would with a, a pallet system. And we can also incorporate that Centratex zero point ball bearing rubber system onto the pallet system. So again, it's just a case of putting the pallet onto the machine, just tightening some bolts. And then all you could have six chucks, eight chucks, 12 chucks. And you even. can link them. Link them all together. And it, it, so it's just, you can keep things. So normally you'd have to buy a certain work holding for your, your rotating and a certain work holding for your, for your mills and stuff. But now you can just incorporate it all between, which really must be a quite a cost-saving thing course, for yeah. the customer as well. Yeah, of course it was. Um, we don't get a huge amount of stationary stuff because I often think people don't realise that we do as much of the stationary stuff as we do. Like people often think we just do the turning parts of it because everyone knows us for our collet chucks, but you can use those same collet chucks on, uh, on stationary devices and i think like you said it's, it's great that you work with quite a lot of the machine tool builders because then you can actually spec the Heimbuck stuff straight from the get-go because yeah. we've spoken about this before where people are are more than happy to to splash the cash for a machine and then sometimes work holding's a bit of an afterthought mm. yeah yeah mm. so right. being able to buy the work holding with the machine yeah. It makes it easier, but also people are a lot, like, it, well, it's a lot easier for people to think, well, it's only an extra five grand here over, over a 300 grand machine, let's say, then, oh, I've just bought that machine and now I've got to spend another five grand. Well, to me, I've always used the analogy, it's like buying a Ferrari and putting remold tires on it. Why would you do that? If you've just spent two, 300 grand on a high tech machine tool, why would you put cheap work holding on it? You want the best. Exactly. And, and, and let's be honest, the better the work holding, the better the product you're going to get anyway. Well, it just increases the performance of the machine. Mm. You put low-grade work holding on a, on a high-grade machine tool, it will just lower the performance. And that's and we've said, this, we've said this over and over again. You're only making money when that spindle's turning. Of course, yeah. yeah. So is, is automation quite a strong point for Heimbuck? Uh, we're trying to move forward in the ways of automation, we've got a new product line of uh, Centratex AC, which, again, incorporates the same zero-point system, but you can change the entire chuck over with a robot. That means you can change the clamping diameter, the entire chuck, and the workpiece, all with one robot. You could run this machine for weeks. <laughs> if you've got the material, you can change. You can do one-off production. You could do long-term production with our products. You can do anything you want with our products, really. And I think that's quite a big one we need to we need to get out here. If, if obviously the product you brought in today, which you can actually see the videos of that on the MTD channel, is now you can change chucks from a chuck to a collet by a robot. So you can take out all human error as well. Because let's be honest, changing a chuck it's a long process sometimes. Not for us. Well, no, <laughs> not for you. Of course not. Um, but also clocking it in, that all comes down to the operator. If, if, and if you're in a rush, sometimes mistakes get made. Of Everybody, course. people, we, we human exactly, think yeah. mistakes get made. So, you could put a chuck on, you get shouted to another room, you come back, you forget to clock it up, and you've changed the chuck for a reason because you're doing up two. Now, the second half of your part isn't concentric to the first half. Of course, and this system just completely. Well, it gets rid of any human error. Well, it becomes idiot-proof, really. Anyone can do it. I mean, you, you guys, are all, you haven't really used our products all that much, but whenever we <laughs> show you guys our collets at Mac and such, we just get you to use it right there and then, and we train you how to use it right there and then, and you guys can actually see how easy it is. And I think that's it. And, like, today, we were t we, today we've done the, the, the video on the, on the, the system, and we, we spoke about it earlier, and I think this was great from you, where we were talking about how... We'd done two interviews and we'd changed the um, the chuck over quite a few times. If we'd have got a normal chuck, we could have spent that entire time just changing one chuck over. All morning. Yeah. All morning. And that's the beauty of it. And you see, I think what's happened, certainly in the UK, we've gone from being a, 
high volume tuppence ain't near bucket manufacturer to low volume high value parts we certainly see that and you know i'm proud of this country's engineering heritage but we've moved on a little bit now and engineering is is a high tech business but you know we're not making these high volumes anymore they're low volume high value parts which you know that entails changeover of work holding you might be holding externally for a 10 off run of parts and then you want to hold internally for op 10 op 20 so you've got to put a mandrel on it and you know changing that manually would have took you you know two or three hours now we're talking two or three minutes and that's just and obviously then however you while ever you spindles running you're making money so that two hours is, is essentially dead time it yeah, is and yeah. that's cost you money and uh, probably took yeah. all the profit out of the park. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Or with this system, um, how long would you say it'd take to for this system to pay for itself? Good question. And, you know, I think it depends what you're making. But, you know, if we go back to what I just said about high value parts, low volume, I think you could see a payback in months, not years. And I think, obviously, I've seen this while traveling around. I'm sure you've seen this too, where... As you're saying, the UK now has become a lot a lot more precision orientated. Definitely. To where we see a lot of people now actually exporting to places like China and not the other way around. No, no, and it's great, isn't it? It's great. It's just it's such a nice feeling to know that the, the tides are turning. Well, yeah. do you know what? You know, one of the, the biggest things is is you look at the high tech industries that are based in this country, Formula One, that's no accident that they're here. You know, we're good at that. Innovation, we've got a rich motorsport heritage, and, you know, we've got some very clever people here. Medical, you know, replacement joints, hip joints, knee joints, most of them are made in, well, the UK, England or Ireland. You know, and there's some very, very clever people making these parts, and we, you know, we get involved in them quite a lot, and, yeah, they're difficult to hold, these parts, as you can imagine, and we're one of the few people that can hold these parts while they're being machined. And like you said, it's it's no accident it's all here, because no. years ago it was just, oh, we UK, you just want a 1,000 off, 2,000 off, send it over there, they'll just rattle them out, 95% will be right, that'll be all right, and now it's not like that. We are literally... Well, a lot of companies we go to are just high precision, one offs, two offs. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's a brilliant shift in dynamic. Mm. And one of the most irritating things I find you have is, you know, when you're talking to sort of your mates down the pub, oh well, we don't make anything in this country. <laughs> you know, we make more than we've ever made, but we're not talking about low value parts. We're talking about high value, low volume, high tech parts. So essentially, UK manufacturing is really on the up at the moment. I think so. Uh, I think yeah. it's been on the up for a number of years. We've, you know, we've survived a couple of pretty deep recessions, COVID as well, and we're still here. And I think that's just testament to the whole of the UK's manufacturing side, really. So yeah. now <laughs> we've gone quite deep into UK <laughs> manufacturing, and I want to yeah. go off on a bit of a limb here because I want to talk about Germany. Okay. And Heimbuch HQ. Mm. So what's it like for you guys to work for essentially a German company? Um, well, it's quite nice, really. Um, the Germans are where most of the stuff is made. We import things over. Um, they're very handy when it comes to design work. They know their stuff incredibly well. Um, but they often can help us out because one of our favourite things to do is people just send us a drawing and say, how do I do this? And that's where people see us as a consultancy as well. And... Basically, our job then is to go through all of our products and find the best, efficient, and cheapest way to make it. Well, sorry, just put in there. I yeah. quite like that because then essentially you're not selling a product, you're selling yeah. a service oh, yeah. it's a or solution. a solution. Very exactly. much so. yeah, solution. Yeah, We're solution based. Yeah. And you know, to be fair, the support we get from from Heimbuch Germany is phenomenal. You know, they're they're brilliant, and you know, we all speak the same language. And, uh, yeah, the, I think the key is is the product is first class. And I think that's it. If you've got, it doesn't matter where you are, as long as everybody agrees on what you're actually selling. Yeah. And like you said, because you all love the product so much, and we spoke about how 
when somebody rings up, you can tell if it's a Heimbuck product mm. just by how they describe it. Mm. So you you all know the products absolutely inside and out. Yeah, yeah. and you know the, the training we get over in Germany and whatnot. It's you know it's second to none, and they you know they're great great partners to have, mm. and they love their specials as well. We're not afraid of doing special work holding, whether it's similar to our products or a completely new product. We're not afraid to take it on. So people can come to you with essentially a drawing of a part or a model and say, look, I need to be able to hold this. Can you guys help? Exactly. And if you don't have a product for it, you can go to Germany and you can get something made. More or less, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, And, you know, that's what makes the job interesting, Tom. You know, we're not shifting units. We're, we're like you say, we're providing a service and um, a solution. We're solution-based. And I think that's great that, like you said, people can come for a solution, not just a service. Mm. So I just want to um, I just want to bring it back now, back to the UK, because obviously I just want to talk about apprentices just quick <laughs> before we finish, because obviously, Jacob, you... I think that's aimed at me, that one. Yeah, yeah sorry. Because yeah, yeah. right. you've just <laughs> about finished your apprentices. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, what you say there? So <laughs> you've just about finished your apprenticeship. So yes. what was it like having, a, having an apprenticeship from Heimbrook? And how did they sort of support you going through that? So, Heimbrook in the UK isn't a big company. There's six or seven of us, um, three of which, including myself, are technical professionals in the company, if you like. Um, So, you really got to pull your weight. Having dead weight within a small company doesn't work. So, I had to pull my weight quite quickly. But David here was more than willing to take me out with him show me how to install our chucks, show me all the technical bits and bobs, uh, give me my own projects to work on. Um, it was quite enjoyable, really. It's, it's quite a, a, a family attitude, if you like, to work life. It's quite nice. But I bet it's quite a daunting task at some points as well to be handed your own project. But <laughs> then on the flip side of that, you've got to feel quite good about the confidence they have in you to give you that product. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I <laughs> as soon as you said the, the daunting feeling of giving your first project, yeah, it is very daunting. But knowing that I've just sat across from me, I can always ask questions. I can always learn something new. If I'm not sure, I'm not afraid to ask. And I think that's a really good attitude to have going forward in any company. I think that actually stems, I want to say approachable, because I, see yes. I, I feel yeah. like that stems well in your office, to then, but then how you guys are when you visit places, because obviously I'd, I'd actually never met you two before today. <laughs> yeah. And you'd not know that. If somebody come walk in the room, you'd think we'd known each other for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. And I think it all comes to that approachableness well, of, yeah, yeah. of you guys. Well, yeah, we like to have that image. <laughs> I think it's kind of handy. Well, we've yeah. always fostered a culture at, uh, at Heimbuck UK anyway that, you know, there's nothing, there's no such thing as a wrong decision, so long as you make one. If it is the wrong decision, well, we sort it out. You know, it's... Mm. It comes back to the same old thing, doesn't it? There's no stupid answers, there's just stupid reactions to That's that. That's right, exactly. dead right, yeah. Tom, dead right. Yeah. And, you know, we all make mistakes. Well, we've said, haven't we? We're all human. It's, it's <laughs> we're course, not all ro- yeah. we're not all automated yeah. like ro- yeah. not yet anyway. No, no life that's is an idiot learn. proof. That's how you learn. And you know, I've been at Heimbook now for thirteen years, and I'm still learning. Well, as long as nobody teaches a robot to hold a microphone, I'm still <laughs> in a job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd just like to say a big thank you to you guys for coming. No problem. It's been appreciated. It's, it's been great, and I've yeah. learned so much. So. Yeah. Um, And I'd just like to thank you all for listening. If there's any topics you would like us to go over or just anything you'd like to hear, then drop a comment below and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.